Howdy, welcome to your last video in the accounting module. You've done a great job making your way through this content. In this video, we're going to jump back into the file we were using for Aggie and Boat Company. So make sure you have both your note packet and your Excel file. Let's look at transaction five. It said Aggieland purchased additional boats they plan to resell to customers in the future for $350,000 on account. We've recorded this transaction a couple of times throughout the different videos, so pause here and record this transaction on your own, and then we'll resume the video and record it together. Welcome back. All right, Aggieland purchased additional boats. Since these boats are boats we plan to resell to customers, these boats are inventory for us. Here, we want to record the inventory that the company purchased, those boats it's purchasing for resale of $350,000. We made that purchase on account, so we owe somebody money, so we're going to have to record a liability. Since this was specifically for the purchase of inventory, we're going to record that liability as accounts payable. So we put $350,000 in accounts payable. Let's go on to transaction six. You have not seen this transaction before, so we'll go through this together. It says at the end of the period, an inventory count shows that Aggieland Boats cannot find $5,000 worth of inventory included in their inventory balance. This is really common for companies. It's really hard to track inventory, and so inventory oftentimes does get lost. And so inventory counts oftentimes show these balances that need to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and make this adjustment. Since this is related to lost inventory, we're actually going to reduce the inventory balance by $5,000. We also need to record a loss. We're not gonna call this an expense. Remember when we talked in the income statement video about the differences between expenses and losses? Expenses are from our everyday operations of business. So an expense related to inventory from our everyday operations would be cost of goods sold. This is not for goods sold though. We didn't sell this $5,000 in inventory, we lost it. So this is not part of the daily operations of our business. So let's go over to our income statement. We are gonna record this as a loss under other expenses and losses. So I'm gonna put in a $5,000 loss. Again, I don't need to make it negative because it's subtracting it in my formula over here to calculate net income. Let's go to our next transaction. Transaction seven relates to depreciation expense for assets owned prior to year five, which totaled $150,000. You've actually seen depreciation expense before in one of the previous videos. If you remember back to that, I told you we would reduce the asset account by the depreciation and we would book depreciation expense. Let's go ahead and look at the details of that on our spreadsheet. Since we're over here on our expenses right now, let's go ahead and put in the $150,000 of depreciation expense. You see this line item here, it's called DD&A expense. DD&A stands for depreciation, depletion, and amortization. Again, depreciation, depletion, and amortization. So if I abbreviate DD&A somewhere, make sure you remember that that's just depreciation expense. So we recorded that for $150,000. Now we need to go and deal with the asset side of things. So let's scroll over to our assets. Under assets, we have an equipment account. So if you remember back from the video, ultimately what we need to do is reduce the equipment account. But instead of reducing the equipment account directly, we're actually going to put a negative balance into an account called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. A contra asset means it's the opposite of assets. So it's included in this asset section of the balance sheet, but it actually decreases assets instead of increasing assets like all the other items. So we're going to make it a negative balance of $150,000, which ultimately is going to subtract from the asset account. So we look at these two things in net, the equipment minus accumulated depreciation, and that gives us book value, which we see here as the sum. Okay, let's go on to our next item. Our next item are dividends. Remember, dividends are cash paid out to investors. So it says on June 15th of year five, the company paid, meaning cash, 
dividends of $200. So I want to first do the easy part, which is reduce cash by $200. Then I'm going to scroll all the way over to retained earnings. Remember that dividends decreased retained earnings. Let's look back at that slide that we had on stockholders' equity. Remember here that dividends and net income both impacted retained earnings. We talked about how dividends actually decreased retained earnings, but I want you to note that these two boxes are separate. Dividends are not part of net income. So dividends aren't subtracted as an expense, they're totally separate from net income and just directly reduce retained earnings. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. Given that explanation, we should only see this negative 200 here in retained earnings. It's a direct decrease to retained earnings. We're not going to actually decrease net income at all for those dividends. Let's look at transaction nine. It says, over the course of the year, Aggieland Boats incurred $90,000 in salaries. They paid $85,000 in salaries this year, with the remainder due in early year six, early next year. All right, there's two things we need to record here. First, let's record that $90,000. It says we recorded $90,000 in salaries. So I wanna record salaries expense of $90,000. So salaries expense over here is going to go into SG&A for $90,000. SG&A just stands for Selling, General, and Administrative Expenses. That's where our salaries would go. Remember I said this could be called a lot of different things, like operating overhead or operating expenses. Here I happen to just call it SG&A. All right, let's go over and record the other part of these salaries. When we incurred the salaries, we would need to record a wage liability for the whole 90,000. I'm going to go ahead and record that here. But the second part of the transaction said that we actually paid $85,000 in salaries this year. So let's go ahead and record the payment of those salaries. First, I'm going to reduce wage payable by $85,000. Then I need to go over and reduce cash by 85,000 as well. Let's look at the last couple of transactions. Item number 10 won't normally show up as a transaction in your accounting courses or in accounting and practice. I just added this here so that we wouldn't forget. It says don't forget any year-end entries now that 12 months have passed before you calculate taxes. So now that the year has gone on, we might need to record what we call some adjusting entries or year-end entries. The only one that we have in this case relates to our second bullet point. We paid 12 months of rent up front in July, on July 1st, but now we've used six months of that rent. So we need to actually expense and reduce the asset account for six months at $7,000 a month. Let's go to our spreadsheet and record that transaction. Remember here, in prepaid rent, we put $7,000 for 12 months or $84,000 in prepaid rent. That was because we were going to use that rent in the future. We were paying it now, but we were gonna use it in the future to benefit our business. Now we've actually used up six of those 12 months. So let's go down here and record that. We're going to decrease prepaid rent by 7,000 times six or 42,000. We also are moving that from this asset account over to the expense account here, and we'll put that in SG&A. Usually rent would go there. So we're gonna put the 7,000 times six months here in SG&A. And again, I'm gonna write it as a positive number because I'm adding it to expenses, but it'll subtract out from net income here. Finally, I need to record taxes. So I want to record taxes on all of my net income. So it says Aggieland Boats has a tax rate of 37.5%. The entire tax obligation owed last period has been paid. Taxes incurred in year five will not be paid until early year six. So we incurred the taxes this year. We need to go ahead and record the tax expense, but we're going to have an obligation or a payable 
for the taxes that we need to pay in early year six. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. So here, I'm going to record under other expenses and losses a total for income taxes. I'm actually, just because of the nature of my spreadsheet, I want to calculate income taxes on total net income, on the total of this column here. So that I don't get a circular reference in Excel, I'm actually going to sum, so I'm going to use the function sum, just type in SUM in parentheses. I'm going to sum all of the net income prior to taxes. So this is just net income before taxes. I want to close my parentheses. I'm going to multiply that by 0.375. And that gives me my tax expense for the year, which is also subtracted from net income. So this number here is all of my income before taxes. And this is my income tax expense. So that total net income is also including that income tax expense reduction. Now that I've recorded the income tax expenses, I need to record the income tax liability because we said in the scenario that we weren't going to actually pay these taxes until the beginning of next year. So let's go over to this income tax liability and we're going to record this same balance. I'm going to sell reference just because I forgot how much it was. You could type in the 81750, that's perfectly fine. Now I have one more thing that I need to do before I finish out this spreadsheet because right now our assets and liabilities are not going to balance because I haven't closed net income out into retained earnings. So to do that, I'm going to just sell reference over to net income at the very bottom corner of this spreadsheet. So I now have net income in retained earnings here. And I'm just going to label this real quick. Let's call it closing net income into retained earnings, just so I don't forget what that is. It's not a new transaction, but it, it is a series of transactions that happen automatically in accounting where net income moves into retained earnings. Remember, net income closes into retained earnings, so that's what we're representing here. Now let's look at the moment of truth and see if our transactions balance. So we're going to go down here to total liabilities and total equity, and we have 2,607,638. Let's hope we have that same thing in assets and did everything correctly here. And we do. So good job, team. We got that right. So we've recorded all of the transactions here. One really quick thing I want to show you before we close out these transactions is that there are financial statements here that actually take the transactions that we recorded and put them into an income statement, a retained earnings statement. We never looked at a stockholder's equity statement, but that's here if you're interested, and then a balance sheet. So you can actually go through these financial statements to see how the transactions that we recorded actually impacted the financial statements if you're interested. It won't be required for this module, but I just wanted to point out that it is there if you'd like to see how all of those transactions we recorded impact financials. Well, in the video here, now that we balance and we did everything correctly, and you're now done with the accounting module. Congratulations.